This will be a demonstration of my Western Electric 1A2 key telephone system manufactured in 1969. This here is a Model 851 rotary wall telephone. This phone, as well as two others on the system, are hooked up to a four-line key service unit, which only has three lines connected at the moment. This phone is only configured to ring on line three, and that configuration is done using jumper wires because it's old technology and that's how they did it. So I will be picking up line two from another phone and I will be calling line three and you'll be able to see this one work. So let me go to the other phone. As I pick up line number two, you'll see the light has come on on all of the phones to indicate that that line is in use. Now I will dial line three. Now something to keep in mind is this is not actually a PBX. It doesn't have the ability to switch calls on its own. This is connected to a PBX and that's how it does it. All the key service unit allows you to do is have multiple phones share one, have multiple phones share a small number of phone lines. So now I will answer this call by hitting the button for that line and picking up the receiver. And as you can see, now I've answered the call. Now I'm going to put this call on hold. This particular phone's having a mechanical issue, so sometimes it doesn't completely go on hold. So hopefully it'll work this time. And it did this time. So now I put the receiver back. And now we have the call from line two to line three on hold which I can then pick up from another phone. So now I am at a different phone on the system. This particular one is next to my bed in my bedroom. So now if I want to, I can answer line number three, press the key, pick up the phone. As you can see, the light goes solid instead of winking to indicate the line is now in use. So I'll hang this one up and it goes out. Now you can see that line two is still off the hook because I haven't hung up the other phone yet. One little vulnerability, I guess, with this system is you can pick up line number two and eavesdrop on the conversation. It doesn't indicate on the other phone that this has been done, so they never know that you did it. Now I'm at the phone where the call originated, so I will go ahead and hang that up. There. This here is the key service unit for the system. This is a model 551C, also known as the shoebox, due to its size and shape being about the same as a shoebox. So what we have here are the line cards. Three of these are original, or these two are original. This one was replaced in the 70s, and this one is a replacement from another manufacturer that makes a similar product. They're all electrically compatible, which is rather convenient. This one is made by ITT Kellogg. The other three are Western Electric. This is line one, two, three, and four. Inside of here, there are four indicator lights, which if I pull this retainer out of the way, you'll be able to see them a little bit easier. So what I will do here is I will answer, place, and put on hold a couple of calls so you can see it work. But before I do that, this is the connecting block for the system. All these wires here go to the three phones, and these jumpers here jump the ringing current from one side of the block to the other. However, each pair of these is a different line. The way I have it configured is each phone rings for a different line. You can make it so phones can ring like one phone could ring for two lines or something, but that's not how I currently have it set up. Lastly, this device at the bottom is called the interrupter, and this is a mechanical timer that controls the ringing pattern and the flashing of the lamps. And lastly, this black box here is a ring current generator, because the ringing current doesn't actually come from the phone line. It comes from a ringing current generator, because these don't actually ring at the same pattern as the phone line, as you probably heard. So... Now I will go ahead and demonstrate this, and you'll be able to see it work and hear the relays. So first I will pick up line number one and put it on hold.
There we go. Now I will call line number three from line number two, like I did before. Now I will answer line number three. There we go. So now we have one line on hold and two lines answered. So now I will put this line on hold and I will pick up line number one and then hang it up. Lastly, I will hang up line number two. Now as you can see, line number three stays on hold. The system doesn't know that the call has been dropped on the other end. This is due to a, an issue with the analog telephone adapter I'm using. However, under normal circumstances, it can detect a call on hold being abandoned while it's on hold. So I will go ahead and hang that up. So that concludes this demonstration of the key service unit and the key telephone system.